Hi and welcome to Canterfloss Crochet. Today I'm going to show you a corner to corner stitch. Um, so this is an example on a blanket that I've already made up. As you can see, it's got a border around it and I've done uh, different colours on this one just so you can see the effect that you get. Now corner to corner um, is exactly what it says. You work from a corner and increase your rows in this direction. Instead of going in a row along the bottom, and then increasing, you're going from a corner. So if you started at this corner here, just down here, and you increase. So you start off with one cluster, then two, then three, then four, and so on. Once you get to your desired width of your project, then you can start reducing and decreasing your stitches. So it sounds probably a little bit more complicated than it actually is. So uh, this one, for this example, I use a Starcraft Special Decay and I've used um, silver and white. So just so you know for reference, um, I've done a small sample. Hopefully this might be a little bit clearer. So this was my starting point down here and I worked my first group of stitches. Then there's two, then you can see there's three, then you go into four and so on. So you start at this angle here and you work across growing to a triangle shape. And then when you get to the, the size that you want, then you start decreasing your work. So that's what a corner to corner looks like. It's quite a nice um, pattern to use, um, but we're gonna crack on and see if we can show you how to do this. Um, so today I am using uh, Demora Studio Anti-Piling DK in Peony. Um, I've also got a four millimeter hook. Okay, we're going to start off with our yarn, our hook, uh, making a slip knot. Now, normally on a project, you tend to make the number of chains that you require for the desired width or length of your project. With a corner to corner, you start off making enough to make one corner and then you increase by one corner each row. So to start off with you chain six. So that's one, two, three, four, five and six. Now you're going to do one treble, UK treble stitch into the fourth chain from your hook. So just to be really clear, don't count this one on your hook. This is stitch one, two, three and four. Okay, so never count the one that's actually on your hook and you're doing a UK treble. So one, two, three, and I'm going in here. So to do UK treble, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, and then you're doing another treble into the next stitch along your chain, and then one more in the very last stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. And that's your very, very first square, if you like, done of your corner to corner. Now it's, it's easy at this point to just keep this end. Don't sew any ends in because it anchors you to where is the bottom of your work. So we're going to be working up and work another stitch to have two, we start off with one, we're going to have two, then we're going to have three. So when you look at this one here, we're at this point, we've just created our first corner and we're going to make the next two stitches above it. So make sure that you keep this end here because that tells you that's the bottom of your work. Okay, you need to turn your work, chain six, five and six. And like we did before, you are going to do one UK treble into the fourth chain from your hook. So that's one, two, three, four. One UK treble into the next chain. And into the last one that takes you back down to your very first square that you created. So you have something that looks a little bit like this at the moment. So just wanted to point out you have your treble stitches and on each end you've got your turning chain which looks slightly different because it's rounded off so each one will always have this turning chain and that's quite important to remember because that's where you're going to be working your stitches. 
Okay, so now you've done that, you now you connect one square to the other. So you're going to find your turning chain and you're just going to slip stitch into that turning chain. So sorry, I'll just show you. If you don't know how to do a slip stitch, you insert your hook into this chain space, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook and take the loop on the back of your hook over the loop on the front and that's your slip stitch. And that's your next round done. And now we want to work into this and create another square into this chain three space. So chain three and work in there another three trebles into that same chain three space. So that's one, two, and three. So now I'm just going to Pause there a second and just show you my work. So remember our tail shows us where the bottom of our work is. And now we have a sort of heart shape, triangular shape that we've created here. And we've got our chain three space here. And we've got our chain three space at the top of this one. And we've just worked into that chain three space. So you're growing out your corner. So we've done the first one, we've done the second one. We're gonna do three on the next one. So each row you're gonna increase one extra little cluster of stitches to make it wider and it starts to form a perfect square. Okay, so we're at the, what we class is basically the end of our row. So now we're going to chain six and turn. One, two, three, four, five and six. And like we did before, you're gonna do a treble into the fourth chain from the hook. So that's one, two, three, four, because we're basically starting a new row. Treble into the next chain. That's two trebles in there and into the last chain. So that gives us three trebles. And again, we have this lovely turning chain at the top. You now need to anchor it down to the square next to it. So we need to twist our work, find the chain three on our heart shape with our bottom still, our bottom end at the bottom and slip stitch into that chain three space. So I, I was looking at it like that. I've just twisted that round. I'm gonna slip stitch into here and I'm going to work another square. So I'm gonna chain three again and I'm going to work three trebles into that chain three space to create my next square. That's one, two, and three. And I need to anchor it to the next square along. So as you can see now, it's, it's falling into more of an easier pattern. I think the first couple of rows are the hardest to, to get your head around. So now we're just going to slip stitch into this chain three space on the row next to it. Chain three. And again, three trebles back into that space. So effectively the, your chain counts as a treble, so you want four in there. Two, three. And now as you can see, it's starting to grow. It's starting to get straight edges along here. This is our bottom end. We've got our first cluster of stitches here. This is our first one. Then we increase by, by one, so we've got two. Now we've got three. Our next row, we're gonna have four. So we're at the end of our, at our edge here. So when you get to the edge, you're always chaining six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're going to work a treble into the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four. And into the next one, the fifth chain from the hook. And into a sixth chain from the hook. You've created your next square. You turn in your work. You need to anchor this one down now. So we were here like this. We turn our work. We're anchoring it down into this one here, which is a chain three. So we want our work to anchor down. So you slip stitch into there. You 
going to chain three and work three trebles into that chain three space. And I need to slip stitch into the next one. So as you can see, it's starting to get wider and you're slip stitching into the next chain three space. Chain in three. And working three trebles into that same chain three space. My yarn's cool. Okay, and now you're into your last one of this row. That's your chain three space. So you're slip stitching across to that one. Chain in three. Three trebles. And we finished another row. So I'm just going to pause here and just recap. So as you can see, it's starting to form that lovely little straight edge like we had here. And it's starting to grow up. So you have one group of stitches here, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four little mountain ranges, little peaks. So on the next row, it will increase to five. So remember on each row, you're chaining six, you're doing a UK treble into the fourth, fifth and sixth chain. Turn in your work and you're anchoring it to the chain three of the of the square that's next to it. And you work all, all the way along and you will increase by one square. So if you can continue doing that, you might want to rewind the video and go back to maybe row three or you might want to start from scratch again. Um, and then keep working, keep turning. And when you get up to the desired width that you want. So for example, this one, how many have we got on here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So a seventh row, then I started to decrease. So this is where you start off, something along these lines, and then you start to decrease to form your actual square. So if you want to pause the video here, rewind, if you want to a refresher on it, or just keep going, work all the way along. Don't forget when you turn in, you're chaining six, and in between you're chaining three into these chain three spaces and three trebles. Work up as far as you want to go and then rejoin me and I will show you how to start decreasing your work so that it forms that perfect square. Okay, so you should now have worked up your um, corner to corner with as many uh, squares as you wanted. So I've only got five on mine because I'm just doing a small sample for you, but yours might be a lot bigger than this. But the decreasing is exactly the same regardless of how many um, peaks or squares that you have. Um, so let's start decreasing. So as you normally would, you're turning your work on there and you're going to now slip stitch into these stitches here. Um, so what we want to do is create a flat edge. You want to end this one. So don't go into this one here, but go into slip stitch into the next one. The next one to it. Which will bring you to your chain three space and slip stitch into that chain three space. And now you want to work that next peak. So we've created a squared off edge. So as you can see there, we've now created a flat edge, which is now mirroring the bottom. So that's going to be our top right hand corner. So I'm going to carry on as I normally would all the way along. So I'm chaining three. And I'm working three trebles into that chain three space. Let's do that one again. You split the yarn. Two. Sorry, one, two, and three. And then you're going to jump across to the next chain three space and slip stitch into that one. Chain three again. And you're doing three trebles, one, two, and three. Slip stitch into the next one, chain three, one, 
two and three. So exactly as you've done before, you're creating your peaks as you go along. Um, if you want to pause the video here, work all the way along to your end, because I appreciate that you might have a bigger piece of work than I have, and then meet me back when you get to your very last one in your in your uh, row of peaks, and we will I will show you how to end this row and turn and start the next one. So I'm now at my last peak here. So I've worked along. I've now got four peaks where in the previous round I had five. I just need to anchor this one down. So as before, you find the chain three space and you slip stitch into it. And this time you're just going to turn your work. You're not going to work that last square. So turn your work. And as in the previous round, you're going to slip stitch all the way along until you can slip stitch into to the chain three space. So don't go into the one you're in. You've already worked that one. Slip stitch into the next one. Into the next stitch. Into the next stitch all the way along. So we've got to our chain three space. Going to slip stitch into that one. I'm going to chain three, and I'm going to work my three trebles into that chain three space. That's my third one. Find my next chain three space. Slip stitch into the top of that one. Chain three. Three trebles. One, two, and three. Going on to the next one, chain three space, slip stitch, chain three, three trebles. Two, and three and I'm again I'm at the end so if we place this down flat you can start to see how I'm starting to round off my corners as I go and I'm decreasing my peaks so I'm on to my last one now and as before find that last chain you need to anchor this one down is slip stitching into that one and now you're going to turn your work so whereas I started off uh, with five in the middle, one, two, three, four, five. The next round I have four peaks. I've now got three peaks. I'm going to turn my work. And I'm going to slip stitch along until I get to this chain three space. So I've already gone into that one, so because I turned, so slip stitch into there. Along we go, every stitch, just to bring that yarn to where I want it into that chain three space chaining three to create my next peak three trebles two and three find my next chain three space slip stitch into that one chain three three trebles And I'm on to my last one again, the edge of my work now, you can still see it starting to square off. I'm just going to slip stitch into that one. And as you can see now, if I turn it this way, it looks more like a square now with a corner missing. So I've got one more row to go to finish off this work. This is my bottom as we started and we increase one, two, three, four, five, and then I started decreasing, so I went four, three, two, and now on the last one. So as before, you turn in your work, you slip stitching to get you all the way along to that chain three space. There he is there, that's my chain three space. I'm slip stitching into that one, the chain three, and my last three trebles on here, two, sorry, one, can't count today, two, and three. I'm going to find my last chain three space. I'm just going to anchor this one down by a slip stitch. And that's finished off my corner to corner. As you can see, I've now created a square 
and I've reduced down. So you would keep on doing that. If you've got a bigger square than me, you would keep on working all the way along until you get to your last one. Now, the best thing I can advise you to do when you're doing this is just to stop every now and again and just check you're only increasing by one each time and that when you're decreasing, you're decreasing by one. It's quite easy to just get carried away and keep putting stitches in and then you'll have sort of a, an odd shape. Um, but as you can see now, just pull that one up a bit. We have a square shape corner to corner pattern. Um, so that's all there is to it. I think the hardest thing for me really when I was first learning was to get to grips around the turning of work and where I was actually joining squares together. Um, so go back to the beginning of the video and just practice that one again if you want to. Um, I will put a link in the bottom in the description box below about where I started started to decrease work. So once you've worked up um, the desired width that you want of your work, um, then you can jump straight to the timestamp then for the starting of the decreasing of work. And that's your corner to corner. So please, can you take the time, if you enjoyed this video, to give me a thumbs up below. If you wanted to add any comments or if you want to see any other types of videos of different types of stitches, if you've got a favourite um, or something you're struggling with, then drop me a line on the comments box. Um, I do read all my comments and I will see if I can work up a tutorial for the requests that you've made. Um, please subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell because this will give you um, instant information about all the videos that I'm putting online as and when they become available. But thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial.